Let's talk about one of the best remedies to act as an antihistamine. Now, histamine is involved in the immune reaction. It's the thing that produces a lot of the symptoms that are related to an allergy. The problem is that sometimes the body um, over responds or in inappropriately responds to um, a potential allergen and you get a series of very uncomfortable symptoms, whether it's hay fever, runny nose, itchy eyes, well, itchy anywhere in the body, flushing response, dermatitis, that's inflammation of your skin, photosensitivity, that's sensitivity to the sun, sneezing, fatigue, and even wheezing because of the constriction of your bronchial tubes. And the more histamine reaction you have, the more cortisol response you're going to have too, because cortisol is the natural uh, body chemical that helps to neutralize these histamines. And if someone has adrenal fatigue, or let's say they have a low cortisol going into some allergy reaction, they're not going to have this buffering effect or antidote to histamines. And so the histamines are just going to rise way too high. So I want to give you a natural remedy that you can use as needed to help minimize these histamine symptoms. And this remedy is quercetin. Quercetin has been thoroughly studied uh, from a lot of different angles. And there's some really great studies that I'm going to list down below that you can check out. So what does it do? Well, it inhibits the cells that make histamines. They're called mast cells. And so a mast cell is an immune cell that releases histamines. And so if we can inhibit the mast cell, we can reduce the histamine. Quercetin also directly inhibits the histamine response. And it also stabilizes the mast cell membrane, which is exactly how a lot of antihistamines work. So you can look at quercetin as a natural Zyrtec. It will reduce mucus and inflammation as well. Now there's several ways we get this natural plant compound. Okay. You can eat foods high in quercetin, which would be the red onion, especially the outer part close to the root. It's in capers. It's in kale. It's in dill, and it's even in radishes, but you can get quercetin in a supplement. And I would recommend taking it in quantities between 400 and 600 milligrams, depending on your size. And because there's a half-life of quercetin, roughly about two hours, I would take it every two hours until you get some significant relief. Now, the thing about these uh, plant-based compounds is a lot of them are fat soluble, including quercetin. So you would want to take it with a little bit of fat to increase the absorption. You can take it with a little bit of coconut oil or butter. All you need is just a little bit. Now to increase the bioavailability even more, maybe you can get quercetin with bromelain, which is another compound that can help you absorb quercetin. Now this is a very effective remedy, but I'm not saying it's going to work 100% of the time or it's going to be 100% effective. So I'm going to give you several other things that you can take that will enhance this effect, okay? And vitamin D is at the top of the list, okay? And I would take no less than 20,000 IUs of vitamin D per day. I would also recommend taking zinc, okay? I would take about 50 milligrams of zinc. And the last remedy that I really like recommending would be nettle root, okay? This is a great anti-inflammatory. It's great for allergies. It's great for inflammation. So depending on the severity of your problem, maybe you want to stick just with quercetin or add some of these additional things to really create a more potent effect. Now, since we're on the topic of the immune system, I think the next most appropriate video for you to watch would be this one right here. Check it out.